Hi everybody, this is Dawn. I am an uh, instructional coach with Glenwood Elementary and I am your elementary um, integration technology specialist, which is also known as your WIN trainer. I am here tonight with your teacher tip, technology tip of the night, and I'd like to dig in a little bit into Google Classroom. So with Google Classroom, when you open up, the first page you come to is this page, our streaming page. This page kind of works like a um, social media page. So it starts with the most current um, information on top, and it scrolls down with older things on there. This is the page that your students will get their upcoming dates and assignments over to this side, and also any major communication that you want to do with your students will be here. So you would type in here, you could type anything that you like in here, and then you're going to post it. A couple decisions that you need to make as you're posting is First of all, what students would you like to post? Do you want to post all students or just some? Um, this is what Google Classroom I'm going to post it on. And then down here is I can add things. So I can add something from my drive. I can add a link, a file, or a YouTube. My final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to post it. But again, there's a few more choices for you. I can post now. I can schedule this post for tomorrow morning or I can save it for a draft. Let me just quickly show you how you would schedule it tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. and schedule. So that's gonna show up tomorrow morning. This little, whenever you see this symbol, it is to reuse a post. So if I have a post that I wanna reuse every year, welcome to my class, whatever it is, I can reuse it. One that I might reuse is one that's a link. So Clever is something that we use in our district a lot. I'm going to reuse that post, and it is going to put our Clever information. So it tells them this is Clever. Here's the login information that they need, and I'm going to post it. So now it's right there on the announcement page for my students. And come to classwork. And in classwork, this is where you're going to spend most of your time. There's two things up here. This is going to take you to your classes calendar, Google Calendar, with all of the dates of assignments that are coming up or tests or anything else. This one takes you straight to your Google, your class drive. So as kids turn in what work, just quickly so you can see, that work is going to come to a folder directly on your Drive. So this folder is called Remote Learning Lessons. You're going to see everything that I've done in here in the past. And then you will see it is right on your drive. So here it is, Remote Learning Lessons. I'm going to come right here to see all my students' classwork. I can also see it on this page as well, but it's very easy to have it in your drive. So I'm going to go to Create. So whenever I want to do anything on classwork, I'm going to do it from Create. Here are all your choices, and I'm going to work up because I'm gonna say fast for last, because the one that I use the most is assignments. I also use topics, but I set this up once and once only. So you can see I already have an ELA one, I have an other, so maybe I also teach math, so I'm going to create a math one as well. So now I have my topics set up. Now I can come in and I can start creating things. The first thing I can do is there's that reuse post again, so I could come here and I could reuse any of these posts. So I would click it, I click reuse, and then here is the post. So everything that I needed is here. There's nothing that I really needed to change. I'm gonna come over here. I agree with everything. It's under the topic of math. So I am going to assign. So if I have more than one class, that reuse post is gonna be very helpful. So I have three different classes that I'm teaching math to, very similar topics. It just makes it a lot easier. The second thing in Create that I could be doing is material. So if there is something over and over again that you are going to be using, say a multiplication chart, directions to a game, a link, I could just put that right here. So I know that the kids are supposed to be using 20, minutes a day on Dreambox, please, right? So I would put that here, and it's going to be there every day for them. I'm going to add it. I'm going to add the link if I had it. I don't have the link right now, but I could just paste that link right in there, and then I can post it. Here, a trick is it really is math, but sometimes with something like dream box i would leave it as a no topic and i'm going to show you why because then it comes to the top 
of my page. So every day if they're supposed to do 20 minutes of Dreambox, they know the link is here. It's a material and it's it's right on top. So that's just a little trick that I use. I can post questions. So if we're listening to a book online or we're reading a book together online, I can pose a question and then I can have them answer that question. I can do it as a short answer or a multiple choice. I could also have um, add anything again that I need to add for this. If we're listening to it online, I could add that YouTube. I can ask them to create a summary, maybe on a Google Doc. So maybe instead of question, um, it'll say questions and then summarize the questions, whatever, and you could have them create something right here. So again, I'm gonna come to my right-hand side. I can do this in any classroom from here and any students. Um, I'm gonna do no grade, but if I did wanna do a grade, you can always do it points and elementary school teachers you can put in out of four points right there you can have a due date you don't have to have a due date again the due date is very easy to get and then um and this one i would probably definitely do a topic and the topic being ela and we'll just write a word here so we have something to add so we're going to add our question okay so that's kind of like what a question would look like the next one is assigned quiz so here I can assign a quiz the quiz the, the quizzes are through Google Forms um, besides for test quizzes on stories and math and all of that I also use this for monthly quizzes I mean not um, not really quizzes at that point it is a survey so I do a monthly survey I would give the instructions of anything that I would want in my instructions please answer this as honestly as you can I don't need to add anything because it's already here so I can come in now and I can update my quiz to make it anything that I want um, on the Google form if you want the lock mode on you'd put this on um, so you'd want to make sure that once the kids were in their Google form, you can lock it so that they can't get to anything else. So if I'm doing like a math quiz, this might be an important feature so they can't start looking up the answers. But for the most part, that is not going to always be locked. Um, so I'm going to come over here to my right hand side. Always important. How many points is this? It's a survey. It's not graded. I'm going to give them till the end of the week to answer this. I can give an optional time, but I don't need an optional time. And this is where that other comes in for me. So this is under other. Okay. And now I'm ready to assign that. So that is quiz. There's a lot of things that you can do with quiz. Like I just said, it doesn't always have to be necessarily a subject quiz, but it could be a survey. Anything that you'd want to use with Google Forms because that's going to automatically go to Google Forms. Here's the one that you're going to use the most, ass assignment. So I come into assignment, I title the kids anything that I'd like it to be titled. Um, and then here I can give the directions. Please read pages, whatever, three and four. and any of the other directions that need to go along with it. If I have something already created in my Google Docs, I can come in and I can um, I can grab those closed read questions and they're added right here. Now what I'd like to do, you can see it says students can view file. So that means they're going to be able to view those questions, but they are not going to be able to answer them. If I put students can edit it, everybody's answers are going to be on one Google Doc. The one that I want to choose is make a copy for each student. So as they open their Google Classroom, they are going to get their very own questions that they can type their answers into. I come to my right hand side. I decide what I want it for grade. I decide when it is due. I can give a time if I need to. I can come under my topic. I'm going to give it a topic. If in the future you want to add a rubric to let them know if it's a project or writing piece and you want them to know ahead of time, you can create your rubric here and add it right on. But that with remote learning might not be as necessary. So I'm going to hit assign and you're going to see that it's going to come right back to my Google Classroom. So I have lots of different things in here for us to look at. So that is all of the different things that you can create. Here's all my topics, my Google Classroom, and of course, Google 
class drive folder where you're going to see all your kids work. Now we're going to come to people and I'm actually going to show you how to delete this first because I should have deleted it first. I'm going to delete a student. I just come here. I can email them. I can remove him. Okay, so we're going to remove this student for a second and I'm going to put him back on in a minute. So here's where I can add other teachers. If I wanted to come in here and we teach fourth grade together, I do reading, you do math, I'm gonna want you to be a collaborator here with me. So I'm gonna invite you along with me. But <clears throat> they can do anything that a teacher can do except for delete classes. So this is a good handy feature to have if you're both streaming, if you're both putting classwork on there, you can each have access to it. Two ways to get your students in into Google Classroom. You can invite the students or you can give them the class code. And here is your class code. So I'm just gonna show you both ways. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy, command, copy, or C, or I could have come up here and copied, right, um, the class code. Or I can invite students. So that's what you just saw. I already had invited the students, so I'm gonna just do it again. Okay, so I have a student, I'm going to invite them. So those are the two ways to get the students onto your Google Classroom. Now, with this, I'm in a student's email right now. So the elementary school emails have been opened up and you are able to get into it. So this is <coughs> what a student would see. So here's all the new assignments that I had in there before I deleted them. And the email lets them know there's new assignments in there. But here's the invitation that I just gave him. So I want to come in and you can see if I wanted to join this class, this is what the student's going to get. And they're just going to hit join. We're not going to do it that way today because that's one way. You can see that that way. I also want you to see it another way. So if I came into a student's account, I come to my Google Apps or my Waffle and I come to Google Classroom. This is the other way that you can join. You can get the Google code by phone, by email, however you want to get that code to your parents. Then they do all the work. So then they are just going to paste and they are going to, or not paste, type in the code and they are going to join. And now he is in my classroom. And you can see everything is the same. So his the classwork shows up in the same format as it is on yours, and it also shows the streaming here. So it tells you everything that I've posted and, and put here, and again, the newest one is on top with the oldest on the bottom. Now with that, I have um, the classwork. I just wanted to show you real quick what it looks like on the student side. So you can see they would click, they can see, they're gonna view the question, and then here's where they would type their answer, and then they would turn it in and submit answer. Now, other people can come in and comment to his answer. You would see classmates' answers over here, and you can start replying to their answers. Um, the other, he can add the class comment here, he can also send me a private message. And that private message from the student will come straight to your email, vice versa. If you reply back to him, it will go to his email um, as well. So that is what the student sees. Quickly, what I also would like to show you here is under classwork, is if I have an assignment, so here's an assignment, let's view the complete assignment. We're gonna see everything here. That's, got it. Um, so everything is here. Um, this is, so I could, it's been assigned. Here's his individual, remember we said individual? Here's the individual questions for him to alter. I don't think there's anything on this, to be honest. It's just for an example of you. But if there was questions like question one, then he would come down and he could write his answer right on here, and it's not going to go to anybody else's. The thing that students need to remember is that once they're done with the work, for you to know, he has to hit turned in. He can work on this several days in a row, but... It, when he's done, he turns it in. If he forgets to turn it in, it looks like he's just continuing to work on that. So all you do, once you complete the work, you turn it in. 
Um, he could also, if he needed for some reason to create an additional doc, he can do that also from here, just like the teachers. They can create something right from here. They're going to open it up. They would click this, and it would take him right to his drive to create that. But it also would be attached to the classroom. So it's always want to start from the classroom and not from your drive, because even though you can do the same things, in the drive, he'd have to share it with you, and it's not going to be in all those nice little folders. It's not going to show up as work um, turned in. So that is how um, classwork would look it's all here and again that turn in is the most important thing here if you click you can also copy any links that there was for the um the students and then here would tell the teachers that are involved in it for him so it's not going to show the other students it's just going to show the teachers all right so that is what the google classroom looks like for students and then the final thing on the Google Classroom for teachers is our grade. So this is obviously not on the student side. It's just on ours. You can see here are the assignments that showed up. And then it tells you who's turned in, who's not. This one was out of a point. So I can come here or I can come directly to this to, to grade it. So I could come here and go, he had a three out of a four. Or I could go to the item itself. And I could come into this, and then I could read it, and I could um, reply to it or grade it. So um, back to the question, back to remote learning, sorry, back to grades. The other thing that you're going to see is things that are turned in and things that are not turned in, and you have the due dates and everything here. So it's a nice grade book right here for um for your classroom, all the grades in the grade book. All right, so I think that is it in a quick nutshell, everything that you would need to know to at least get you started. If you have any questions, again, it's D-B-U-C-K-U-S at W-P-S-60.org.